42. Isn't that a famous baseball number, Carson? Wasn't that? Uh, yeah. Robinson. It's a great movie, too. Yeah. 42. It's a big that day. A movie reference right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Right. <laughs> right out of the gate. It's all downhill from here. Hey, that means we got 50 coming up and we have uh, we have some big name guests coming up for everybody. Should we should we, you know, tempt everybody a little bit? Why don't we uh, we give them a couple, Brandon, but then, yeah, at the end, we'll we'll kind of share a bit more. So well, I think with our 50th, we have uh, Mr. Daniel Disney coming on for us. Yes, I think that's going to be great. The, the king of social selling. That's right. The king of social selling. Um, yep. No, there is some. Uh, thanks to to both of you. There is some major, major, uh, some guests coming up here. So we'll share more of that as, as we get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, commenting styles. Brandon, you've been doing a lot of research on this. So we're really yeah. interested to kind of hear some of that. Um, if you're on and joining us, please welcome. Let us know you're here, where you're from. Um, join in the fun here. But let's start with uh, our weekly dad joke challenge. Yeah, who would like to go first? I'll do it. All right. All right. Carson, what starts with T has a T in it. I'm sorry. What starts with T has T in it and ends with T? A Brit. A teapot. It's a good one. Wait, I didn't even follow that. <laughs> I'm confused. Starts with T, has T in it, and ends oh, with T. Okay. All right. All right. Teapot. All right. Yeah, that's not good when you have to explain a joke. That's bad. Yeah, you have to like whiteboard out the dad joke. That doesn't quite yeah. well, got it. Um, that's yeah. okay. All right. We'll give you some grace there. Here's mine from uh, ChatGPT this week. What do you call a snowman with a six pack? Uh, a drunk snowman? An abdominal snowman. <laughs> <laughs> I vote for Carson. I got some chuckles there. Yeah. I, I understood I'm, that one. Yeah. I vote for Carson. That was good. Or chat GPT. Uh, All right. Well, well hey, which y'all he, uh, which took himself out of the running today. So Brandon, sorry. I'm done. I'm done. But we got Colby and Dave Tegmeyer, Kirk Miller. Kirk, good to see you, my friend. He's uh, stuck at O'Hare. All right. Tara from Cincinnati. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for joining us. And Butch says isn't even vote, voting today. He's just giving up on the whole thing. <laughs> so. uh, uh, yeah, Colby, I agree with you. Carson wins. Well, Tom, who's uh, who are we sponsored by today? And let's get into this. Yeah, I'm so just quick that. thing is, you know, Modern Seller HQ, we have a relatively new program in there called Inner Circle. And what that is, it's a group, I guess call it for lack of better, a group coaching uh team that's come together in there and we meet a couple of times a week and it's really starting to kick off kick up and get going we're talking a lot of you know in-depth subjects with people so if this is something that would be interesting to you go into modern seller hq and check out inner circle and there's more data that's in there as well but a lot of questions about it over the last week so i thought we would uh, bring it up here um but let's get into the show which is commenting styles today and, you know, Brandon, you're kind of going to be a bit of our, this is, this is definitely right in your wheelhouse and your expertise. So we're going to kind of rely on you as our, our special guest today. But let's start off by, we've talked a lot in the past about commenting and, and the importance of commenting on LinkedIn. What, what's, you know, let's, let's kind of start with that again. Like why is commenting such a big deal and mm -hmm. why is it becoming a bigger deal all the time as it relates to social and, and LinkedIn? Yeah. So I, commenting is important for several reasons. One of them is uh, it is the digital version of active listening. I, it sounds kind of oxymoronic. I get it that when, when we say something, we're actually listening. But in a digital world, when somebody posts something or somebody comments something, the only way they know that we read it is if we respond. And that's a comment. Uh, so it's a way of acknowledging people, especially if there are prospects and they comment on something or they post something. We can acknowledge it. We can comment. It creates conversation. And, you know, one of the one of the sayings that we talk about uh, quite a bit is that engagement in public 
creates conversations in private. And what that means is when we engage with people in comments, we comment back and forth, they're much more likely to get on a call with us if we ask for it. And as our, you know, wise Obi-Wan Kenobi Carson always says, anything that we can do to increase our probability of success, we need to do it. So that's one of the reasons why commenting is so important. The second big reason why commenting is so important is it's the only time we know who is actually going to see what we write. Meaning when we publish content, we're at the mercy of the algorithm. We publish a post, we never know who's going to see it. Whether the algorithm shows it to people, it gets, shows up in their newsfeed, or anyone comes to our LinkedIn profile page to see our post, we can't control any of that. But when we comment, we go to posts from influential voices in the industry. That's why I like to comment on Carson's post. If I comment on Carson's post, I, I, people think I'm, I'm more important than I am because I'm hanging out with Carson. But when you go and comment on other people's posts, you know who's going to see it. Anyone that's liked it before or anyone that's commented and the person that published it, they're going to get a notification. They're going to see your face. They're going to see your name. They're going to see your comments. And then the third reason, and then I'll shut up, is the third reason commenting is so important is it, it forces us to uh, do our research, right? Kind of backwards. When we're going to comment a lot, we better know what the heck we're talking about. So we start you know, reading more. And then the other thing is when you comment, you're doing your intel. You're reading other people's posts. You're reading other people's comments. You're gaining information. So those are the three big reasons why I think commenting is so important. Wow. No, and I, I really love number two about the, you know, you're in control, right? You're not yeah. in control of the algorithm. Carson, what's your take? Anything to add to that? Yeah, um, you know, I kind of view it from three vantage points as well. I think Brandon articulated it really well. And I think if when you boil it down, you know, why do we leverage social selling? Why do we leverage these tools? It's to build relationships, right? So um, relationships are a two way street. And what's beautiful about commenting is it gives you the ability to see and stay at what, what's at the pulse of your potential buyer or your target prospect. You can see exactly what matters to them, what they're talking about, what's top of mind for them. Uh, they share things in their personal lives and in their uh, in their careers, you know, in their organization, things that, um, you know, are, are ripe for the pickings when it comes to creating a relationship. So number one is that relationship building piece. Um, the other, you know, it establishes credibility uh, because if you have the opportunity to go in and start commenting and start talking about your perspective, uh, they can start to get a sense of, you know, hey, is, is this somebody that I should get to know? Is this someone I should get to know better? And then as Brandon pointed out, visibility. Uh, because when you start commenting, whether it's an organization's page, um, it is a target prospects page, or even a friend's, everyone that's connected with that person is also going to see you talking like the expert with perspective. Um, it's going to uh, increase visibility. The algorithm loves it and uh, it favors true, meaningful connection. Yeah. And Carson, that, that is really, really important. We said there too, especially over the last few weeks with uh, everybody so concerned about the algorithm. Uh, for people listening, when, when you go comment on other people's posts, the algorithm sees you connected. It doesn't care that you went to their post and commented. What the algorithm sees is you're connected and now more of your post will show up in that person's newsfeed because the algorithm sees you, you two people engaging with each other. So you can control that and then it tells the algorithm that you're, you know, you're connected. So Carson, are you seeing Brandon's post all the time since he's, you know, writing your commenting coattails? Absolutely. Well, I've, I've rung the bell on Brandon, so I see every okay. time. Okay. And that's uh, that's an important piece. Um, you know, I think leveraging tools like Fist Bump uh, to be able to be notified when people are commenting or ringing the bell so that you can be notified when people are making their uh, posts so that you can go out and actively engage. Um, that's taking it to the next level. Um, you know, I think that's important. And you'll definitely notice uh, the people that I engage with a lot and I engage with their posts, uh, they, are, they, they shoot to the top of my feed. Um, they are always who I see first as I'm scrolling through. 
Um, so that that even goes farther to say why commenting is so important. Um, and when you engage in a dialogue with people and when you are posting things that the algorithm likes, um, it's more likely that people will engage in conversation with you as well. Yeah, and just, you know, kind of Butch, I think, makes a great point here, right? Based on my experience, if I could only post or comment, I would comment. And I think just everything we've just talked about over the last few minutes, I think amplify that and spotlight that because it's something you can control and get a lot out of, whereas the post is not, you shouldn't post, it's just you have more control over the, the commenting side. Frankly, I encourage you to schedule commenting time. Um, I think it's by default, you know, we go in and we look at our feed and we'll like stuff. Um, but, you know, what really fosters that two-way connection is if you're going out and doing proactive, intentional commenting time. Yeah, time blocking that is so important because then we actually do it, right? And, and I think that the more people comment and you start experiencing the value or the fruit of the activity, it actually, it's motivating. And then also it's more fun, right? I mean, engaging in social is, is actually a lot of fun because you're just talking with people and you're learning a lot. And, and then moving those commenting conversations into Zoom or Teams conversations and getting to meet people and expanding our networks. Well, and I know we're going to move on to commenting styles here, but just one last point on that. You know, Brandon, you talk a lot about this being sort of the virtual digital version of networking, right? The networking event. Yeah. But think about the opportunity you have every day now to go to a virtual networking event and look and see who's there and make comments and participate, right? And people love generally going to live networking events if they're you know, looking to build relationships and healthy connections. Now you have the opportunity to do that every day or multiple yeah. times a day on the, on the digital side. So <clears throat> what our show today, though, was commenting styles. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about what we mean on that. But We've also had, excuse me, a lot of conversations recently where people have been hesitant to comment. They're a little bit nervous about it. You know, what do I say? How do I say it? You know, what if I say something wrong? All of that. So part of a lot of what we're going to talk about today with commenting styles is how to make this easier for you, how to make it more straightforward. And as you just said, more fun. So let's talk a bit about the commenting style. What does that mean and why does it matter? Yeah. So over the years, as, as I had been coaching people, and by the way, people listening, and I see Kirsten joined us as well. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments, guys, what um, what prevents you from commenting or makes you nervous about commenting? I'm going to ask everybody to be a little bit vulnerable because commenting is hard. And, and the reason I started caring about commenting styles was because it's hard for people. I was working, working with people, coaching and training people, and they, they, you know, the rationale of commenting all made sense. And then they would get on their, on their keyboard and they'd go, oh, what do I say? You know, and it's, I remember going back all the way back in when I first started in sales. And one of the challenges for people in going to networking events was it was kind of easy to show up and go to the bar and grab a drink and stand around and have your drink. But then actually talking to people, going around and introducing yourself to people was a real challenge for people. And I remember being trained on how to start conversation, right? How to go introduce yourself to people. I think commenting is the same thing. It's, it's kind of scary for a lot of people. And so I'm curious what it is for people that would prevent them or what their concern is about commenting. But um, looking at commenting styles, and I don't know if I've shared much of this, um, I went to graduate school for, a, I have a master's degree in organizational communication. My plan at the time was to get my PhD and be a professor. So I got that whole nerdy side of me. And then I got the bug for business and I left after my master's degree. But I started looking at this going, you know, there's all this research on communication styles I wonder if we could take that research and apply it into commenting because it's just a digital form of communication. So that's where I started in looking at interpersonal communication styles and started applying it into commenting styles. And what do you mean by a style? Like what, what is a style? What would be an example of that? Yeah. So um, one of the first styles that came out was uh, a fact giver. Right. And this this translates directly from interpersonal communication styles. But a fact giver 
is um, somebody, and I've got the, the definition right here, but it's, it's somebody who likes to provide accurate details, right? They'll, um, somebody will say something, uh, somebody will write a post, and then they'll follow up with facts to either support or maybe even um, disagree with what somebody said, but their tendency is to remember facts and therefore they share facts. I mean, if you think about it, we all kind of know people that do this, right? You can think of that one person that always has facts. I mean, I think about Carson with movies, the way he pulls out movies and he'll say things about movies. I'll go, you know, I've seen that movie, but I never just thought about it that way. Like I think Carson's brain naturally works that way for him to remember detail. And I'm glad you think like it that. works. What's that? I'm glad you think it works. <laughs> Come on. He'll, he'll be a reference if you need it. Just do anything you need. Just brand. I have all kinds of useless information up here. <laughs> but but it, but yeah, you're right. There are different. There are people that are very good with the the facts, as you're saying. So mm -hmm. just to back up for a minute, by style, what you mean is when I go to comment, what is my style of how I'm going to contribute with that comment. So am I going to be somebody who's going to be, and we're going to talk about these in details, but is it somebody who's going to provide more facts? Is it somebody who's going to maybe encourage? Is it somebody who's going to, you know, I, I have a different, I guess, philosophy, if you want to call it that, to how I go into the, to the commenting there. Yeah. And I would say it's, it's our voice. If you want to say it, it's, it's our voice. It's our natural tendency and the reason I think it's important to learn our style is to give us confidence. So often when people get in front of the keyboard, they look at something and they go, oh, what do I say? It's we have this tendency to overthink. Like we try to say something important or try to sound smart or do whatever. And we got to get rid of that. We just got to be ourselves. And that's why I think is the importance of discovering your own natural style. And the reason why we created the commenting style assessment tool is it's for me, I kind of think of it as like your disc profile or your Myers-Briggs. There's something empowering when we learn a little bit about ourselves that helps us be more in certain ways or maybe even try to overcome uh, areas of weakness. But I think there's something empowering about when we understand our style. Yeah, and let's hit a couple of these comments here because I think you asked the question, Brandon. We got some really good answers here. So um, Shay's saying here, it's very scary because there's never a right or wrong answer, period, right? It's a lot of subjectivity along mm -hmm. the way, which I think is a really, really good point. Yeah. And then Kristen is saying, again, this is why is it scary? How, often it comes down to feeling like I either have not enough knowledge to add anything of value or not enough time to add a comment of value. I think that number two is a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. Cause they don't want to do something that's kind of maybe you don't want to do something that's cheesy or half baked or whatever. Cause I didn't have any time. So I don't want to look, you know, like I'm doing something halfway. Um, let's see, Tara, those of us who are introverts aren't comfortable engaging this way. I think this is what is keeps us from physical networking functions. And like Kristen, unless I'm adding something of true value, I just don't want to speak up. Yeah. And, you know, I want to speak into that because I think that taps into this entire notion of imposter syndrome. Right. And we we feel or we believe that what I have to say or what I have to contribute isn't really that important. And what happens is that we think of things that are standard for us or something that is easy for us because of our experience or from our personality or something. And so therefore we think, oh, this is easy for everyone else. So if I say it, it's just going to sound duh, like no kidding. And so we hold back and we don't say anything. And that's a fallacy that we all need to get over is that if you see something important in a conversation don't blow it up and think that, oh, everybody thinks this way because we all have different personalities. We all have different experiences and you will contribute to someone. Now, yeah, somebody may look at it and go, well, duh, but who cares? There's a lot of other people that'll gain value from that. And we, we've got to, it's, you know, you owe that to the community to add your contribution so they can experience it as well. The other thing is you know, commenting isn't our default, Right. When we open up a LinkedIn or a Facebook or a Twitter, you know, a lot of times we're scrolling. Commenting takes effort. 
And I think a lot of times if we have, you know, a moment or two, unless we schedule that intentional time to go out and do it, um, if we have a moment or two, we're just scrolling through and, you know, making a provocative comment that stands out in the crowd, especially in a post that is getting a fair amount of comments, it takes some effort on our part. And, um, you know, I, I think that's why I encourage people to schedule that intentional time, uh, but also make sure that you're making a comment that, that stands out from the pack and, and adds to the conversation. Ergo, when we're making posts, we also want to make sure that we are um, asking uh, you know, questions, uh, you know, fostering, saying things that will foster conversation, uh, be provocative in those posts. Um, but it is, it's a comfort thing uh, for a lot of people. And frankly, you know, now with technology, if you're looking for prompts, um, feed the post into ChatGPT and ask for, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the styles in a second, uh, but ask for a, a style of, of response or a comment that you could make and then add your own voice into it. Uh, those types of things will really help you uh, in crossing that gap. Yeah. And that, that functionality is actually um, getting added into fist bump too. So once you know your commenting styles and then with fist bump, every time you comment, it's going to go back into the AI and chat GPT is going to continue to learn your style and be able to provide comment suggestions for you. And I don't, I don't want chat GPT creating comments for everybody, but I want them creating comments for everybody to review and personalize. Uh, but don't just take what chat GPT gives you and copy and paste, but add your touch to it. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and Mark, welcome as well. Um, Mark has a good comment here. Comedy does take effort. You have to be in the moment and engaged, saying something that matters and is relevant, just like you were face to face. And, you know, that can be scary, right? Mm -hmm. But I think all the things we're talking about here with knowing your commenting style, as you get more fluent and better understanding of your commenting style, it gets easier. It gets, you can whip through it much faster and you can feel more confident in, in what you're doing. So, um, Mark's comment. He asked ChatGPT to give him a, a comment to respond to Colby using a Texas twang. I love it. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, brother. That's All great. Right. Well, and Tom, Tom, you said, or in Carson, I can't remember who said it, but it made me think is, you know, responding as a comment is just like being face to face with someone. All right. Number one is if uh, somebody comments on your comment, and you never respond, it's like you ignored them. And nobody wants to be ignored. But the other thing is to get more comfortable with it. Um, I coached people with this and I think it helped me when I was really trying to, like I wanted to comment and I did the whole, like, I don't know what to say. When you read someone's post or someone's comment, if you have to read it again and just kind of close your eyes and imagine that person standing in front of you and think about what you would say, because when we're face to face with someone, we don't have the opportunity. Well, I guess we have the option. It's just really rude to just walk away and not say anything, but you're standing face to face somebody with somebody and they say something, something comes to the top, something comes to the surface of our brain to respond, whether it's a question or whatever, run with that. Like, don't overthink it. Don't let the distance between what we thought and what we type change everything and cause you to freeze up or, or to say something you wouldn't normally say. Yeah, so let's, let's jump into the commenting styles. The 10, there's 10 styles, right, that you've identified, Brandon, in your research and what they are and, you know, like define them a bit on kind of how these vary or differ from one to the other. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So of the 10, um, the first one is a fact giver, and, and that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. They, they like to add verifiable data. They're, they want to be accurate. Um, the next one is a connector. Uh, again, it's somebody that will connect people together. Those are be comments like, oh, this reminds me, you know, or, you know, tag other people and go, you should see this or jump into this conversation or I thought you'd want to see it. I mean, that, that would make sense. The other one is a comedian. And uh, there's a lot of people that their natural bent is to use humor as a way to bond with other people. And so their style tends to move towards the funny. Um, the next one is clarifier. And a clarifier is one, they, they, they have a, a skill of like condensing 
some, you know, condensing something and, and saying it much more simple. And we'll distinguish that from a distiller, which is another style where a distiller is um, they'll extract the most important information and kind of rephrase it or represent -pre it in like a framework or a more condensed style, which I believe is Tom's style. Um, the next one is an encourager, uh, somebody who, you know, obviously encourages people, supports people, wants to be more of that emotional side, um, which then leads and differentiates from an empathizer. Uh, an empathizer is you really have a, a genuine sense to, to empathy and be a part of the author's voice and the comment. <clears throat> And then we have uh, the last three are a storyteller, a natural indication to explain things by telling stories. Those are pretty easy to identify, and you probably can all think of somebody right now that they just tend to tell stories. And um, second to last one, number nine, is an expander. They want to go deeper into a subject matter, um, add more, you know, take it down a rabbit hole or expand it into new territories. And then the last one is a challenger and similar to what you'd expect with a challenger, somebody who wants to question the assumptions or question the validity of the topic. So those are the 10 that we created over the last, it's been about six, seven months of working on this. We took it out of all the research in interpersonal communication, did a whole bunch of research looking at comments and then applied it. And now we're moving into a new phase. We're actually going to have uh, a friend of mine who's a professor at Texas State University and a grad student take this and go even deeper with it. So in six to nine months, we should have another version of it and maybe even have a published paper about uh, commenting in social media. So Carson, I'll tell you what I think mine are in a second, but what do you think you're, how do you, where do you think you fit in? fit in this yeah I, I dabble in a few of these you know i was trying to think you know right like what is the preponderance of my commenting you know what does it consist of and i often find i would say i'm an encourager um because i've typically find that the comments that i make um i i frequently comment on the uh you know the question based um or the you know personal milestone or the you know here's an announcement or something great or those kind of those provocative sales related videos. Um, I'll comment on a lot of those and typically try to pile on and add to the conversation. But um, a lot of times it will be acknowledging and recognizing the quality of the post that was made. Um, I respect post game. So that's typically what mine will be when I'm making a, uh, a prudent comment. What about you guys? So, so you think you're more on the encourager? Would that be your primary, you think? I would say encourager is my primary. Though I try to I dabble in a few of the others. I'm not quite the comedian yeah. Brandon is, as an example. Um, Brandon's a good comedic uh, commenter at times. But um, no, I, I would say that's the one that I mostly play play in. Yeah, I would say I'm in, I would say I'm in the kind of a couple of them, the distiller, which is, you know, looking and trying to take something and make it a little bit simpler and the clarifier, which is I think there's a lot of overlap between the, the two of them there. I think that's my engineering background trying to look at how to engineer something and bring it down into something there or, you know, restate something that hopefully may be a little bit more clear or easier to understand. Um, I think that's naturally how I look at things. When I look at somebody as I look at their post or I look at a comment, I look at, okay, how is that, how can I engineer that down? So I think I'm more of that distiller clarifier piece. Brandon, where do you, where do you think you fit? Well, you know, what's funny is, um, and you guys haven't taken the survey, the assessment tool yet, have you? Well, I've taken it, but I, I, I don't know what it came back with. You didn't give me okay. my answers. Got it. You, so, you, said um, I flunked. you said I flunked. That's all I knew. I, you flunked. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I threw it out. But um, so I thought I was an encourager like Carson and I've gone through it multiple times and I tend to get classified more as a clarifier and an expander. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I think there's a, as I was, we were just going through this and you were talking, Brandon, I realized there's kind of a bonus by understanding these, a couple bonuses. One is, is if you start to get a feel for what your commenting style was, 
then inherently that's going to be a bit of your publishing style or your posting style as well, right? Because if you look at the through the lens of encouragement or imp, or uh, distiller or would clarify or whatever, and you know Carson, if I look at a lot of your posts, a lot of your posts are very encouraging, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to encourage people to get out and do something and take a chance, and you can do it, and it's inherently very encouraging in what you do. So you don't just you know your style carries over from the commenting style to your posting style, or your publishing style. So I think this also can help you understand better how to post and, and to build posts as well. And again, well, even, go we're going to gravitate towards certain things that I think are inherent with our personality, but I encourage people to dabble with some of these other styles. Some of them are asked. There he goes. Encouraging again. See, there you yeah. go. Encouraging. Again. Can't stop. I can't I stop. Know. I know. I, you know, I think the key thing, like I would love to do more of, of some of these, you know, seeing them laid out in this style. And I think, you know, let's let's publish maybe a, a supplemental on this. Maybe we can put it in the chat uh, for this episode, you know, putting the different styles. I think it's interesting when I look at some of these like fact giver um, connector is a great one. You know, I, I, a lot of times if I see something that is uh, you know, that I know will resonate with with folks that I know. Um, I'll even go in and, you know, bring them into the conversation at sign, tag them, bring them into the dialogue, um, you know, love doing that. And especially when you see posts that are being made. So in a perfect world, this works where I get my, you know, my fist bump hit every day and I go in and I look at, you know, my target prospects and I'm seeing some of the things that they're posting, being able to bring other folks into the dialogue, saying something uh, that shows value. Uh, that is perspective that, uh, you know, that keeps the conversation going. That should be our aspiration. So I think it's important to look at some of these other uh, styles and incorporate some of them into our natural style. Yeah. And I think the other sort of, I guess, um, bonus out of this is now when you look at other people's comments and other people's posts, you can look at it and go, wait a minute, is that more is that person posting from the viewpoint of encouragement? Are they posting from the viewpoint of fact giving? And now it helps you even be better and more spot on with your comments and so forth, because it's going to align either with the comment or the post that you're commenting on. So to me, this just gives me ammunition that I can work with to be way more effective. It's like I've got analytics in a weird way that I can then use to help in, in what I'm doing. Yeah, I, th I think it's... Um you know, knowing our style, should it be empowering, but it shouldn't be limiting. And as you start to see other styles, or as Carson was saying, try some of the other styles, I think it's it, it should help us gain confidence and empower us to try a few things, but also just have that confidence in our own voice, which the goal, of course, is to help us comment more. Because as we talked about at the very beginning, just the value um, of commenting the fruit that comes from it is worth it. And it's yeah, like I mean, anything look, else. The more, sorry, Carson, the more you do it, the, the more confident you get. I love that. I mean, get back to your original mission statement. What is your personal brand? What do you want to be known for? Align your, you know, your style uh, to your objectives on social, uh, whether it's thought leadership, networking, or knowledge sharing. That's a huge point, I think, right there is going back to your objective. I think that's super important, right? Because why are you commenting? Why are you posting? What are you trying to accomplish? And now if you can align that to the objective, it really turbocharges where you're actually going. It, it, to me, it's like like the back to the future car. It's like going at, you know, at, at whatever light speed or whatever along the way. How's that? No one else was stepping in with any 88 stuff. miles per hour. Right, that's right. <laughs> I know a guy that was in Back to the Future, by the way. Um, you do? You do? Yeah. He was in the really? lunch scene. Yeah. He was. Yeah. If you want to see what he still looks like, it, it was like this. You got this right here. There you go. There you go. I don't think the bald spot was there yet, though. <laughs> That is fun trivia. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I really, um, I, I don't know how to encourage people enough with commenting and just to address it. We're not talking about commenting because we started fist bump. We started fist bump because we realized how important commenting is, and realized that there wasn't a good tool out there to help people do it. 
and then uh, help people do it more consistently and strategically and actually capture the comments and put them in CRM and all that type of stuff. But our goal is to really help people get more confident in commenting so they do it more often. And I think today is all about what are, you know, what are the easy ways or the tactics, Tom and Carson, that you would say for somebody and anyone else that's, that's in the uh, live right now that helps you get confident or comfortable to comment more? Because at, at the end of the today, at the end of the show today, if somebody out there starts commenting more, takes a little bit of a risk to comment once or twice more and starts getting that momentum, then we've succeeded. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, and I, I'll say this for myself, and I think maybe it was Kristen or, or one of the or Kirsten, one of the comments back here was, you know, having enough time to feel like you can say something relevant, right? So you're not just going through and saying, great post. Thanks, Brandon. And honestly, I found myself recently, I've had a, some schedule crunches doing more of that. So I apologize to both of you in advance if you've seen that. And I think, the, but by using what we're talking about here, it helps us optimize our time a bit better. So we can go in and we can feel confident even in a short period of time, making a more relevant post, making or a comment, making something that may be more relevant or or better than rather than great post or congratulations or some one liner that comes along the way. So I think, you know, it's it's like you said, Brandon, the goal is to get people to post more often. Time is an element to that. And if you feel more confident and you feel more optimized, then you're maybe going to post a little bit more and a little bit more higher quality. There's no greater compliment that you can give on LinkedIn than commenting on their post and, and doing so in a way that it keeps the conversation going. Um, you know, think about how you feel when somebody makes a, uh, a, a really insightful comment on one of your posts. Um, that's the feeling that you're giving to that person. And realize that your target audience, the people you want to connect with, they're out, they're out there. That next hiring manager. Uh, they're making posts. They're talking. You have the opportunity to engage them. Your target customer. I've gotten meetings solely because I commented. They didn't reply yeah. Yeah. to my email. They didn't reply to my LinkedIn DM, but they did engage after I started commenting consistently, uh, you know, leveraging fist bump and leveraging, you know, ringing the bell with this person. I got the meeting with this senior executive. So I think the key element is to realize, you know, why you're there, you want to have these meaningful connections. And it's an uncomfortable muscle, right? I think once the, the key thing is sometimes you just, you got to dive into the deep end of the pool. Um, the biggest mistake is not commenting. You're not going to be able to say something most likely that will be so turn offish that will shut down the relationship completely. What are you gambling? What are you risking at the end of the day, True. really? Uh, if you have zero relationship with this person, you're not gambling anything uh, by making some comments and testing the waters. So, and then worst case scenario, you've got your training wheels with chat GPT yeah. that can give you some ideas of what you might say, test it out, try it. And then like Brandon said, put your own flair into it. Yeah. A lot to gain and very little to lose. Right. It this really yeah. boils down to I want to hit on a couple comments here real quick. And then Brandon, I want to get into sort of the process that people can go through on this. Yeah. Um, you know, Dave, I think, brings up a really good point here, right? If your employer is not aligned with this, sometimes you do it faster than you, you should. You know, hey, I've only got 10 minutes that I can do this. Otherwise, I get, it back, get back to the phones. That can kind of squeeze your time on that. So I think that's a really relevant point as well. And, and Mark uh, brings up as well, practice, practice, practice with thoughtful comments that are two sentences long, long to start. And uh, he also says he uses this thing called fist bumps. I, I don't know exactly what that is, but it sounds cool. So I'll, I'll have to I'll have to check it out. Automates my reminders in in sequencing. Um, and Butch says, "Great, great point, Carson. I think he was voting for you, Carson, back for the dad." I'll take it. Thanks, <laughs> Butch. Yes, um, that's good. So, how do you, Brandon? How how what's how do you determine this? I know you've been working on this assessment tool. How does it work? Like, you know, take us through kind of what it does and what it works and how it determines your 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 style. Yeah, we we worked on we worked on the AI prompts for quite a while. And Tom, you worked on it as well with me. So don't don't act like it was all me by any means. But um, I'm, an, between, I'm an encourager. I'm a giver. Uh, I'm just say, Tom makes thing. people feel good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's my style. All right. 
but with, between Tom and Daniel and I and, and the research that we did and looking at it, um, we, we kept working on the prompts to really refine the prompts to make sure, um, you know, we looked at comments that we were judged based on certain styles. And then we ran it through the prompts to see if it was consistent with it. And we're going to keep refining it. But um, so we did we did a little bit of the scientific research, you know, the the grad school geek in me wasn't going to let me just throw something together and not do it with a little bit of, you know, making sure it was significant. Um, so that's what we did is uh, we looked at posts, we rated them from human perception of looking at a post and what style would you call it? We got some consensus there. And then we started looking at the prompts to see if there was consistency with what the AI um, was saying. So that's how we got there. Um, and then we go through with the survey. There's five sample posts. Nobody has to worry. This, these posts aren't going to get published anywhere. But uh, again, the encouragement, kind of like Mark said uh, there, is uh, write a thoughtful comment that's at least two to three sentences. Don't do great posts. The AI has, not, you know, you may come out as an encourager, but all you ever said was great post, great post, and great post. But two to three sentences or more of something thoughtful that's responding to the message of the post. And then at the end of it, you get to see your primary and your secondary commenting styles. And again, these are just meant to encourage you and validate something. It doesn't mean you never differentiate from all those. But uh, what I hope for people to get at the end of the end of the survey is an empowerment okay, if this is my voice, now I'm going to be able to comment more and, and you know, use this lane uh, for now to really get started and comment more. Yeah, so there's, there's, so basically the way that it works is you'll fill in, you know, you'll, you'll look at a couple of posts, fill in some comments, it goes through the system, and then you get the answers back pretty quickly, right, with from the, from yeah. the AI side of it. Yeah, so, absolutely. And, then, and the stuff that Daniel's doing, and again, I don't want to make this a, this should, this is about commenting, but what Daniel's working on, just to give him a shout out, and his team are, are three developers on Fistbump. We're going to be able to take your primary and your secondary commenting style. They're going to be weighted, weighted because one's primary, one's secondary. And you'll be able to, through Fistbump, is be able to get suggested comments based on your primary and secondary. But it'll also give you the ability to use a drop down and select other styles. So if you want to try a different style, you can use the AI to suggest a comment based on other styles. And where this is going to be really important is, um, and Carson, I know you're on the, the advisory board, but we have uh, Ameriprit coming on from Humantic AI. I mean, think about how powerful this is going to be for us to do it faster. You use Humantic AI to get their disk profile. And they're using Fistbump to give you a comment that's based on a combination of your style and their disk profile to really try and create the most optimal comment that represents you, but is designed for them to receive it. That's what I'm really super excited about. That's powerful. So Carson, any final thoughts before we wrap up here today? And then Brandon, before we go, please go through our upcoming guest list. You mentioned one, but I think we need to get everybody excited about who's coming. Sure. Are there any final thoughts on commenting or commenting styles? Just do it. Just do it. All no, right. I, I, look, I, it goes back to the heart of why we're all out there. You know, we've got to really live and embody why we're doing social selling and it's to meaningfully connect with folks. They're out there talking and posting and the only way to make it not a one-way street is to go out there and start commenting and engage in the dialogue with the people you want to meet. That's it. So, um, you know, we'd love to hear, you know, have uh, some folks post in the chat um, what you think your style is. And, uh, you know, after you've taken the assessment, come back and uh, we'd love to, you know, hear what your styles are and kind of what you've learned from this experience. Yeah, yeah we both Sorry, I added, ahead. yeah, I added the a link to a survey on my stream and on the social selling for newbie stream. Carson, I haven't added it on yours yet, so either you or I could go back and and add it into the comments. And uh, it takes, you know, five six minutes, and you you'll get an email with your primary and your secondary style. And I, I wanted to just wrap up here on this commenting with Butch saying you know, you can't lose something you don't have. And I, obviously, Carson, that ties to what you were saying before. I think that's so relevant 
right? It's like how are, it's, there's so much to gain and so much to lose. Yeah. I'm sorry, the other way around, right? So much to gain and so little to lose as you go through the, the commenting process here. So, or an engagement process. Yeah. All right, Brandon, what does our lineup look like coming up? Hey, we got some, we got the three of us got together and said, okay, we are pushing a year. So we're at what, 42 today. Yeah. So we are 10 episodes away from hitting our one year mark. And so we have uh, we have Alexander Lowe coming back next week, which is going to be awesome. He is he's my sales navigator guru. Anything I need, I go to Alex on on Navigator. Um, we have uh, Anthony uh, Inarino coming in. We have Darren McKee coming up. We have Gina Bianchini, who's the CEO of Mighty Networks, coming in. Um, Mick Adams, who is a, a LinkedIn coach and trainer out of Belgium. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have Mandy McEwen, who, you know, she's on planes all the time, speaking on stage on all things social selling. I had a chat with her yesterday. I was really jealous. She was in, uh, she was on the big island of Hawaii, you know, hanging out. No big deal. Um, we have Nick Bennett. Again, Nick, I don't know how many tens of thousands of followers he has on LinkedIn and Kevin Schmitz from LinkedIn uh, is going to be on. And there's several others on here that, um, yeah, you guys are just going to have to keep coming back. And I'd love to hear well, and you have Daniel, as you said, Daniel Disney coming up for our 50th. On right. The Shared that one already. Yeah. Right. So yeah, man, this, we're going to have to kick up our game here, I guess. Titans of social selling. The titans of social selling. Yeah, this Ooh. is our titan series that are coming up. And are we, we going to get rid of the newbies name and become titans now? I think Ooh. social selling for titans may be the new name. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Great comments today. Um, thanks for everybody participating. Be sure to get that link. We'll be looking and we'll, and we'll mm -hmm. definitely report back on some of the assessment data that we're getting back as we as we go through here. Yeah. And on the podcast, if you're listening to it, we'll add the link to the survey in the, in yep. the podcast notes too. Yeah. All right, Carson, we've missed you the last couple of weeks. Take it home. Yep. I'm, I'm here. So I usually end with a point, but today I'm going to end with a fist bump because I just feel like it's more appropriate. So <laughs> until next time, everyone, happy social selling.